Okay, so welcome back to our T16 project, which is known as the Zost 16. Since the last time you've seen the car, a lot of things have changed. So we've completely re-engineered re the suspension design. So it's got double wishbone suspension all round now. I mean, fully adjustable caster, camber, and tow. And we've also redesigned the engine slightly as well, or at least the layout of the pipes and all, that, all the plumbing and everything. So let's have a closer look at it. <laughs> So first of all, let's start off with the engine. One of the first things we've done on the engine is we've rerouted the cold air intake to the supercharger so that it's actually getting cold air from the wing here and it's getting filtered through this carbon fiber air filter box. Now, originally it was just taking hot air in from the engine bay, so that wasn't going to be any good for charge temperatures. The other thing we've done is added two fans to the bottom of the charge cooler. Um, so now you can turn them on inside the cab to suck cold air through. Um, that also helps reduce charge temperatures, which means we can put more boost in. Uh, we've re-plumbed this slightly to give it a bit of a better path as well. So the other thing we've done is we've added an engine oil cooler, and that cools the oil as it goes back into the dry sump tank. And a major upgrade that we gave it is a dry sump pump, multi-stage dry sump pump. So it's got um, a large pump putting oil in the engine and it's got three large scavengers taking it out of the engine, taking out a mixture of air and oil and putting it into the, into the dry sump tank. We've also added an idle up valve so that when he's in the pit lane, he can switch it on and he raises his idle so it's not very easy to stall the car because having a racing clutch and everything it has a bit of a tendency to stall. At the front of the engine, we've also removed one of the pulleys. We had, we had two pulleys here driving the uh, originally it was driving the oil pump and there was, another, there was another pulley driving or another belt driving the supercharger and then there was another one driving the alternator and the water pump but we've actually incorporated everything into one belt now so it's got one belt and it's driving the alternator and the supercharger that's it there's a separate drive for the oil pump and the water pump's drive is taken off of the cam belt this time because it's a slightly different engine layout Okay, so another thing we did was to lower the engine. We lowered it by about two inches, which of course helped with the centre of gravity. It also allowed the drive shafts to lay flatter, which meant we were able to have more suspension travel because of the reduced amount of plunge action on the drive shafts. Okay, so talking about uh, chassis and suspension design, we redesigned the whole back end of the car and the whole front end of the car as well, but I'll show you that in a minute. So we cut off the rear all the rear tube work at the bulkhead here and replaced all of the metal work that you can see. It's a stiffer design, a more lightweight design. It uses lightweight tube as well. Um, so that's the chassis. The chassis obviously also had to alter in its design to accommodate the different suspension design, which now instead of being the first and strut, it's a double wishbone. And this, this double wishbone suspension is particularly good because it allows very accurate adjustments of all everything you want, caster, camber, tow, bump steer, bound and rebound, everything. So I'll take you through that now. This is one of the uprights off of the car. Sort of goes here, if you like, when it's all fully assembled. So adjustments are as follows. You've got these spaces here will adjust this top link in and out, which will adjust your camber. Then you can also adjust on here the amount of bump steer by putting spaces underneath this, li this link as well. That's what these spaces are for. And then, so you do that by, you know, measuring for bump, which is quite in depth. So that might be another video we'll have to do at some point. Um, and then just do this link, link here will adjust your toe. So it's all very easy to do, very quick and simple. Adjusting bound and rebound is done by these two adjusters on the shock absorbers here, for the, for the shock absorbers. Um, yeah, it's a really, really good design. So we'll be proving it on track soon. Okay, so the other thing I'll show you about at the back here is we've got uh, brand new brakes. We've got these really lightweight AP racing brakes. They're fantastic. We've got AP basic brakes at the front. I'll show you one of the discs for those. 
So here's one, here's one of the discs. It's a two-piece disc, so you've got an alloy, lightweight alloy center, which is called the bell, and then the, the rotor on the outside. All right, let's show you what's under here. Okay, so under here, again, we cut the chassis off and all the suspension setup off at the bulkhead. The tank, the petrol tank was originally somewhere up here, obviously not good for center of gravity. So we repositioned that down as low as we could possibly get it and tucked it in amongst the chassis. But it's still easy to get, easy to, get to, you just remove a couple of bars and you can remove it. Like I say, we redesigned the chassis to accommodate the double wishbone suspension. So it's a similar setup to the back with full adjustment on caster, camber and tow. It's also got a anti-roll bar on the front. I haven't bothered with it on the back due to the nature of the way it is. It doesn't really need it per se because the spring stiffnesses are so high. But we may decide to add one later on. We'll see when we're testing. Um, and then of course, uh, again, lightweight. AP Racing brake set up on the front as well. Okay, so we've redesigned the layout of the cockpit and uh, there's quite a few more switches and gauges and dials and things going on. So I'll just run through them quickly and tell you what they all do. So over this side, you've got your sort of just fog lights, headlights, indicators, wipers, washers, that sort of stuff. In the center, you've got the digital dashboard, which re will read whatever you want it to. At the moment, it basically tells him what his RPM is and what gear he's in. He's also got a shift light over here, which is colour coded, which can be quite helpful to make sure he's not hitting his rev limit. This is the adjuster knob for the brakes, for the brake bias, front and rear. And this is a digital display for that to show you where exactly the knob has been left. Actually, if I turn the lights on, you can see. So, moving across further, we've got the fire extinguisher, which is electronic. You arm that here, and then that's ready to go. You test it by leaving it in the middle position and pressing fire. The, we've got a, there's a race logic system on this with cameras and GPS. That's a display for that. That'll give you like lap times and stuff or whatever you ask it to do whilst you're driving. There's a nice bright gear selector light as well. So that tells you what gear you're in. And then down here we've got some analog gauges. Much prefer analog gauges for racing because you can quickly glance at them and see that everything's correct. So you've got fuel pressure, oil pressure, oil temperature, and boost pressure. And then like I said, that's the, that's the controller for the uh, fire extinguisher and the display for the brake bias. Down here we've got a big bank of breakers, circuit breakers rather than fuses, so that if you're racing around and something pops out, you can quickly push it back in and hope it doesn't blow again and so you can carry on racing. And then down here we've got some uh, toggle switches for various things that you, you want to be able to turn on manually. So we've got intercooler fans. You've got, um, so if I turn the ignition on, that'll actually come live. We've got idle up valve. So you switch that one up and it'll raise the idle for when you're in the pit lane. This is turning that turns the dash on and off if you don't want that on so it's not distracting you. That turns the shift light on and off so if that's distracting you. Vents, that's like uh, internal vents inside the car to keep you cool. Uh, that's the power for the V-Box, this thing, if you want to turn that off. And that's to turn the blipper off, the throttle blipper that actuates on downshifts. So yeah, there we go, that's a quick uh, tour of the cockpit. The next step is to take it on track and really test this thing out and adjust everything and dial everything in. So we'll see how we get on. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.